to welcome you on behalf of the members of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and particularly our Iraq Initiative uh, to the podium to speak to our audience here and perhaps if your schedule permits to take a few questions afterward. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Governor Shalibi. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm actually very pleased to be here. Uh, I have, of course, uh, followed and read the activities of the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, we are, of course, here to further uh, the relationship between the Iraqis and especially the Iraqi business sector and of course the American friends, which I think is very important for both countries, but especially for, for the Iraqi economy. Uh, of course, I would like this to be, uh, time permits, some kind of dialogue, more than talk or lecture or something. But I'm going to give a brief idea about the salient development uh, in the Iraqi economy. And uh, questions, of course, uh, are the more, most important aspect of, of, of this talk. And uh, I'm ready, actually, to respond to these questions and, and uh, uh, and to have a dialogue after that. Uh, as you know, of course, you, yeah. before 2003, the Iraqi economy had very high and even actually uh, uh, rampant inflation. Uh, the huge external debt. And of course, in general, weak currency and the <coughs> depreciated currency. And of course, uh, 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 we have also, uh, because of the sanctions, because of many problems, at the time we had low oil output, and we had actually a lot of unemployment, which is still probably there, but of course better than before. And above all, we have actually some a destroyed infrastructure. Uh, we had, of course, all the uh, government departments and, of course, the whole administration is, is, is paralyzed to a great extent. And uh, the economy was, of course, managing its affairs day by day. So actually, we were not able to affect any kind of development and, uh, and of course, uh, sanctions was a, uh, an important factor, but uh, um, the policies to respond to the sanctions were also not adequate. Um, but all these things, all these uh, characteristics which I, I, I just mentioned, uh, point out to, to the fact that when we, in 2003, we are just faced with, with a situation where we have to retain 
stability, economic stability. Now, of course, central bankers are not politicians, so whenever I talk about stability, I mean economic stability, not political stability. Sometimes we talk about political stability, of course, but I mean, uh, uh, I always actually mean economic stability. So we thought that actually we should attain economic stability because without stability, you cannot actually move forward. Uh, you cannot, of course, uh, uh, move forward in order to specify your goals, uh, to, for example, you, you don't need to have some kind of uncertain environment because uncertain environment pre prevent you from specification of of your objectives and, of course, above all, attainment of those objectives. So, uh, what Iraq actually needed, because stability is very important for, for growth, uh, it needed actually to pave the ground for this growth and Therefore, it needs to stabilize the situation, to actually stabilize the exchange rate, and to have some kind of low inflation. Uh, because all these things are very important uh, to achieve some kind of uh, predictability, because we, I mean, you cannot have development if you are not able to, to have some kind of power of predictability. I mean, you, can, you cannot specify your objectives. You cannot, of course, uh, specify any pa parameters and, uh, uh, in, your, in your plans or in your budgets and these things. So uh, we concentrated, especially in the central bank or monetary policy, on the stabilization of exchange rate because, of course, the period, between, uh, the period before 2003, uh, we were actually suffering from uh, a lot of problems and gyrations in the exchange rate, a lot of fluctuation in the exchange rate, and uh, depreciating Iraqi dinar very much. and and. Uh, uh, we had also very high inflation. Uh, you would agree with me that under these circumstances, it's very difficult to plan and to have your budget, even if it is annual budget, let alone having, for example, five-year budget or something like that. So these actually stable parameters are very important for uh, for 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 specifying all de your development plans and development budgets. And of course, we were concentrating also and spent some time to, to organize and to, to streamline, let us say, what we call the payment system, you know, because of the importance of government in the economy, because of the oil sector. Therefore, actually, we are the banker of of the government, and in this case, uh, we, will ha we had actually to organize all these payments, so, so any actually procurement, any kind of, of uh, payment by the government goes through its bank, which is the central bank. So stability is actually is very important in terms of having a stable exchange rate, low inflation, orderly payment system. And, uh, and these are very important ingredients to have a development budget. You know, you cannot have, you cannot embark on development programs with uh, fluctuating exchange rate, with of course high inflation and 
your payment is uncertain. I mean, all these things are very important to have to have a development budget, and of course, we are we communicate a lot with the government. We coordinate a lot with the government to make sure that this payment, this this uh, stable parameters are there. And uh, now it is, of course, we pave the, the ground for the government to act on this. And of course, the government is, is utilizing the opportunities providing, provided by this stable environment. Not totally, but I, I think they are making use of that. And uh, uh, we always, in our dialogue with the government, we mentioned to them we actually provided these uh, bases for, for, for your development. It is now up to you to work on, on development objective because you don't worry about change in exchange rate. You don't worry about other things, about high inflation and all these things. So, so the ground is actually is prepared for the government to work. But it's not only for the government. It is the ground is prepared. The conditions are, are there for the government to embark on this budget and for investors in general, domestic and foreign. So I think this, is, this is stable environment Mm -hmm. The investor doesn't need to think about actually what will be the exchange rate six months from now, for example. Or, I mean, at least the, they see that there is a very solid objective to maintain the stability of the exchange rate and to, of course, the, the, to control inflation. And investors are interested to see their payment uh, is organized on all these things. So this is the economic side. Of course, the political side and the security side is a different matter. But of course, they, go, they are supposed to go hand in hand. And in fact, I think the government is trying its best in order to, to make use of these uh, events in order to uh, to actually complete the picture, because you have financial stability, then of course your 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 macro, uh, your your uh, political stability and military and all these things, and the security situation is actually a whole integrated picture that will have to be completed. Completed, and of, and in this case. Uh, I mean, we can comfortably invite all investors to come to Iraq because the conditions are there. Of course, Iraq is a rich country. I mean, I mean, rich, rich in the sense that it has oil, but it is not rich in, the, in terms of development. Let us actually make a difference. So I think I think the question here it is. The ground is there. The ground is prepared for investors to come, actually, and to, to, to embark on, 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 on their uh, activities and to, uh, and, uh, and those organizations who are actually responsible for that, banks and the central bank, um, were able, were able to actually, to a certain extent, I mean, there are a lot of exogenous factors, as we say in economics, but we were able to do, uh, for example, the central bank for using the reserves in order to maintain this stability. I mean, 
sometimes people say, well, the reserves, I mean, which is actually growing, I mean, uh, why don't you use them for current budget or something like that? But of course, the reserves are using to maintain this stability, which is good for the government, good for investors. So all these policies, all these what is happening here in terms of attaining stability is that it is actually not only good for the investors, it's good actually for the government and for the formulation of its budget. I mean, I'm very glad to see that when the budget, which is of course a fiscal issue, not a monetary issue, that people who are formulating the budget, they don't think about actually what the future behavior of exchange rate, the future behavior of price level, because they have become, uh, they are now more or less sure that things are very well controlled or, 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 or let's say under, under supervision all the time. Um, um, of course, this, um, I cannot say that this will be 100% will continue to succeed. No economist can actually, uh, especially when, when we work under uncertain and the globalization and all these things, we cannot say that this will be 100%, but of course we have, of course, all the, the for example, the reserves, we have all uh, the question of, 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 of monitoring, and we are watching the situation to, to maintain this stability in terms of all exogenous events. events. Of course, there are a lot of theoretical things, which, uh, for example, you have uh, something called, uh, although it is very remote, something like, for example, currency wars or currency attacks or all these things. I mean, you know, all these things can happen and they increase the money supply in the country and everything in order to, to, but then the country has the reserve to encounter that and all these things. So all these things actually, the stability is there for what we call what we call actually the real sector, government, non-government, to work. Government, non-government, international. It's all real sector. So you are all welcome to work in Iraq. You, will, you need to be sure that actually stability is there. I mean, we are all hoping that stability in the political sense and in the military sense is actually uh, we can, of course, achieve a uh, very high level of that. And of course, it will be uh, definitely uh, the, uh, the stability in terms of the uh, financial sector will help at achieving that. And there is a, uh, and that's why actually uh, we are, helping all this real sector in order to, uh, sometimes of course some people think that uh, um, the central bank can go beyond that, beyond providing stability I and mean, go directly to financing. But I mean central bank of course financing the stability of the exchange rate. It cannot finance projects, of course. It's not the job of central banks. But uh, nobody, nobody actually in, in the country is responsible for the stability of the exchange rate, which needs a lot of money because, I mean, you hear about the auction and all these things and meeting the demand for foreign exchange and all these things. I mean, this is auction and we pay a lot of money for that. Uh, so we, we are actually paying our share in order to, to stabilize that and uh, 
And uh, this is actually uh, very important uh, for the external, uh, let us say, the external side of the economy. And in fact, in fact, I mean, I'm sure all investors here definitely will look on the security situation in Iraq and see all the news in the TV about problems and all these things. And but even, of course, suppose that you have everything is fine and uh, security is 100% uh, is and all these things. But when you come, of course, to changes in your macroeconomic variables, the stability variables, I mean, uh, people will be reluctant to come unless they are sure that these things are also stable. Uh, so I, uh, you can be sure as investors, you can be sure that this macroeconomic picture will remain. Will remain, of course, uh, we are a country with we are an open economy. I mean, it's about 98% is uh, oil actually dominates the economy. And uh, because of the fact that we are, we are open economy, we are affected by all developments. I mean, we, uh, we are currency flows and all kind of imports and exports and all these things are, they are all actually uh, Variation in all now, for example, in the world you have all kind of increase in, in, in food prices and all these things. I mean, this will affect us, no doubt. And uh, uh, when it, when this has an effect on the exchange rate, we intervene, no doubt. And uh, the government intervenes when there is shortage of these goods in the market and all these things. So what, I'm, what I want to say is really that, uh, that uh, this environment will continue. This is stable environment in terms of uh, these achievements is going to continue and it's going to help, of course, the government, to help the private sector and uh, and, and at least to formulate the budget, to formulate uh, the plans, and to, to, to they, they need actually to be reasonably sure when they invite investors. So this is actually in general what I wanted to say about our contribution. And of course, most of the, uh, I'm ready here actually to respond to any question. I did not want to go to the picture of GDP and the structure of GDP <coughs> because this is not very much directly related to the, to the, the picture is that, is that what sort of environment we have for investors and this is the environment we have for investors. But thank you very much. Yeah, so, yes, John, you to, to provide your name uh, and sure. your uh, my, my is John Lysenbrink from Arlington, Virginia. Um, with respect to the ongoing uh, need for stability in Iraq and its exchange rate, would it not follow that there's a direct need for a potential revaluation of the currency to induce both domestic and foreign investment in Iraq? And with regard to that, how far do you believe that we are from a potential revaluation Uh, we, we collect questions or we respond to one by. Okay, we respond Take just yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much for this question. And uh, um, well, even if I know the answer, I cannot tell you. <laughs> well, the thing is, no, I think the question is all, you cannot have an economist saying without the answer it depends, you know. So the question here is actually a revaluation. Will uh, 
which, which really is going to depend on, on, on to what extent we are, we are going to continue, uh, let us say, controlling inflation. As you know, I don't know if you go to the, to the central bank law, you will see it's in the website you will see the first objective is maintaining the price stability. So uh, there is a little bit of inflation in Iraq. I mean, it's now, it used to be 2% or 3%, now it's about 5%. But we are watching that very carefully. Uh, if this inflation continues, we will have to revisit more, revisit, more than revisiting, I cannot say. We are going to revisit the question of exchange rate because, I mean, uh, uh, revaluation, I mean, depends on inflation. Of course, I mean, you know, uh, uh, the other factors that determine the movement in currencies uh, are a lot. I mean, some kind of, we look at trade, I mean, exports and imports and all uh, your, your, all your obligations in the, in the balance of payment and all these things, definitely, no doubt, you, you look at those. But uh, those are problems relating with the, more with, with, the, with the development part of the economy. The question of maintaining price stability is really something you, you see the inflation and all these things, because nobody else in the economy is concerned with inflation. I mean, the government, when it put its budget, uh, I mean, the, the government is spender and the central bank is saver. So uh, they, it's not very important for them to mention and to concentrate on, on on inflation. So actually the question here that we are going to track and follow the development in inflation first and of course other factors which I mentioned second and then we will determine our exchange rate movement. Uh, <clears throat> thank you Governor. Uh, this may be the same uh, question so I can understand if you can't answer it but I've heard a report that, your name, oh, my name is Bob Kelly. I am an investor in Iraq, the mm -hmm. Summit Hotel in the International Zone mm -hmm. with the OPIC uh, financing. What? But we, we've heard, I've heard a report that uh, just in the last couple of days that Iraq is about to cut three zeros off of the currency and that they call that re-denomination. That may be the same question that you just received, but I wondered if you had any information about that. Well, I mean, I don't know whether it's the same question. I think this cutting three zeros is, uh, is uh, um, it has, of course, it shouldn't be exaggerated, actually, the problem. I mean, the question is just redenomination, and uh, I mean, people, of course, you see a lot of people that uh, writing a lot of articles in the, in the newspapers, I mean, criticizing the central bank that is going to, the, the, the value of the Iraqi dinar is going to depreciate or something, all kind of talk. I mean, this is a question just actually to facilitate payment, facilitate actually ease of counting and all these things. And of course, I mean, when you see now a lot of figures, I mean, you see trillions or, or, or huge figures actually when, if you want that, I mean, if you want to be precise, you put about 12 figures or four, 15 figures and all these things, 15 um, digits or, or something. So I think, I think we have a plan on that. And uh, you remember uh, why the, there was no actually a government decree to, have, to add these zeros. They happened actually because of the course of development of the economy at the beginning of the 80s. I mean, just inflation was very high. Inflation, inflation was rampant. And therefore, I mean, small, small notes and these things were actually not 
started not to be used on these things. So uh, government started to add the three zeros on these things and at the time. And of course, uh, conditions are different now. Inflation under control, exchange rate on, is managed by the central bank, all these things. When you had actually the zeros, you could not manage, not of course because of the fault of the government or the central bank, which I think there was, but I think the question is that because there were a lot of exogenous factors. I mean, we're not saying that we are champions now. I mean, there were actually a lot of external factors which affected actually the behavior of all economic stakeholders. And therefore, actually, a lot of people didn't know actually what to do. They have started to add three zeros and all these things. So now, actually, the situation is completely different from that time. You had a high inflation, you have now a low inflation. You had actually something which is a stable macroeconomic situation. I mean, at the time, actually, the situation was not stable. So uh, the only way to combat all of these things at the time is to increase the de denomination and put three zeros. I think, I think uh, to bring back the Iraqi dinar, where actually three zeros are removed, and of course, you have to, this will have gone hand in hand with monitoring of the exchange rate and all these things, and, 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 and you will see. I think now it is, uh, it is uh, probably, uh, I mean, we are, we are studying that, not studying, we have decided actually on that, but when, when to implement that, to remove all these three zeros is, uh, is very soon. But of course, this requires not only the central bank activity, this it requires because, I mean, it's something you have to make a lot of propaganda, uh, a lot of uh, adv adv uh, adv advertisement campaign and all these things. And you have, of course, to go probably some a campaign to, to, to uh, educate a lot of people on these things. Uh, so I think, I think it needs a lot of help from the government, from many people in the government, especially the security forces. And if we hope that security forces uh, become less busy with, uh, with the violence issues so that they can devote time for us. Uh, yes, ma'am. Dr. Shabibi, marhaba, ahlan wa sahlan bik, nawart al balad. Uh, thank you. Welcome. Uh, uh, the town is much beautifuler with you here. Thank you. Um, thank you with very the cherry much. blossoms. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you. My name is uh, Dr. Karadagi. I'm with the KHRW, an NGO that works in Iraq uh, for years and years. Um, actually, since '92, mm. and we have been working mainly in the north before Iraq liberation, and after that, in the rest of Iraq. And I wanted to ask you, Dr. El Shabibi. Um, uh, what is the plan of the Iraqi government and and uh, and your your the bank as far as business development for women and giving opportunities to minorities and women in micro enterprise and lending and helping them start small businesses? I really appreciate your answer. For, Thank for you, women. Yes, sir. For women and for minorities uh, as well as for under underserved and disadvantaged population. Yeah. Uh, especially since we work a lot with widows. It's, as you know, Iraq has the largest number of widows going from the south yes. to the north. And because of the war and the violence, we're gonna see increasingly more orphans and widows, and these are going to be heads of households. Therefore, I do encourage that even small businesses, even businesses and investors that work in Iraq have a public-private partnership with the mainstream and with minorities and women in order for them to be able to have uh, sort of uh, programs, and especially encouraging NGOs that work with women and uh, children and work with women and disadvantaged population. Thank you, sir. Again, welcome. Thank you very much. Well, uh, these are, of course, very important issues, definitely, and uh, both socially and economically. Um, 
uh, but they are actually more of a government issue rather than central bank issue. Because you see, this is of course all developmental. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I mean the central bank of course, as I said, provide the appropriate or the adequate environment for that. I mean, uh, when we come back uh, to, the, to the question of uh, price stability, I mean, low inflation, uh, all kinds of, of affecting any kind of payment, all these things, I mean, you'll be surprised how much all these things, if they are done, they will <clears throat> help, help this project. So I think, I think we, we are ready uh, to, to, to help in providing this environment. But of course, uh, and you know, in, in, in our law, in the central bank law, we are advisor to the government. We have said that the central bank is an advisor to, to the government. Now, sometimes we don't, they don't listen to our advice, but that's a different thing. <laughs> So I think, I think the question here, the question here is that we can of course discuss that in the economic committee hmm, and mention to them any kind of, uh, uh, any kind of, of action they should take. But if this action requires money, the government should pay, not the central bank. You see, the central bank actually the money it pays is actually for the banks, for the stability, for, for, for short-term objective, for monetary stability, which is very good for development and even for this project. Mindful of your time, just one more? Well, I have only about three or four minutes. Okay. One more question, uh, maybe from this side of the room. Sir? Uh, Ken Kuhn with Global Capital Investments. We are the general partner for the Iraq Fund. Uh, the question I have for you, Governor, and welcome, is uh, in your view, what, is, uh, what effect did the sharp drop in the CBI policy rate have on lending activity? And are you seeing any effects in the economy at a grassroots level? The drop in the uh, policy rate of the central bank. Yeah. Uh, of course, I mean, we don't decide the policy rate uh, uh, only if we see the development in the economy and the fact and the behavior of inflation, I, say, I said. I mean, uh, you see the, the, the behavior of inflation uh, is, is, is very important. And of course, when I say, for example, monetary policy become, for example, more restrictive hmm, or accommodative, is of course uh, this is of course reflected in the, in the in the in the policy rate or other other measures of of monetary policy. So when we see of course all these development and of course when we see for for example inflation is high, we put up the policy rate. Uh, we actually make actually other parameters of monetary policy harder and all these things, and we are watching the situation just now, actually because of, as I said, because of inflation is going up. So actually the policy rate is really, is a function of, of all these development. I mean, the, 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 the uh, inflation and all these things. But of course, um, this is the policy rate, which is actually the, in the central bank. But the rate which the banks lend with is probably different. I mean, what you see, you probably, if you want to borrow from the banks, from a commercial bank, I mean, it's very much higher the rate. And this is, of course, uh, we, have, we have actually uh, policy liberalization or, 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 or uh, I mean, the banks, it is actually, what judges the, the bank is the market. So they go sometimes and, and, and put a lot of uh, marks or increase the, the, 
the, their rate, which is not a policy rate, because the policy rate is a, in, in the central bank. So they put, they, they increase the, the interest rate and all these things in order to, well, uh, there are a lot of problems they, in terms of, of uh, uh, the uncertainty in the loans and this of repayment, all these things. So the policy rate is something which is supposed to guide the rate which the, the bank the banks charge to, the, to, to their customers. But uh, unfortunately, the banks sometimes, I mean, deviate very much from the policy rate. Right? Well, I mean, this is a big subject, actually. The, this is, of course, one of the problems with our banking sector. I, I, I think uh, it requires a special a special talk. Uh, I'm not 100% satisfied with the, with, the, with the contribution of of the banks yet. I mean, they are good, very good, and actually some kind of an inter intermediation. But I mean, the uh, bank uh, banks want to play things safe, so they they either put some of their money in the central bank or they buy foreign exchange in the auction. And these are very safe. There's nothing actually risky. Well, the risk is, uh, is in the lending. Hmm? And, and this is actually banking. You know, I mean, so uh, we don't have only problem with the government, we have problem with the banks also. But uh, with dialogue, I, I think it's going to be solved. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in thanking the governor for his presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We're grateful for him being with us today and sharing with us his, um, his agenda. I know that you have a very busy schedule with the spring meetings of the bank and fund. And again, we're grateful for your time. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you, Thank you all. So we, um,